Welcome back to week four of the GoGamecocks.com preview show. South Carolina is coming off a bye week, two and one on the season. Head to play Central Florida, although I hear they like to be called UCF now, and they're not the Golden Knights, they're just the Knights. So forgive us if we stumble on that. South Carolina against the UCF Knights. This is kind of a weird game in that South Carolina goes to Bright House Network Stadium. A, I can't even name the conference that's out. That, the American. The uh, yes, American the American conference. something. I remember, a brand new conference. So just a lot of strangeness about this game. This is an Eric Hyman scheduled game. Sort of came back in the days when the prices for getting these kind of opponents to come to your home without going back to their place was getting sky high. You were paying people a million something bucks. And Eric Hyman said, you know what, I'm going to save a little cash. We're going to roll down to Orlando, go to Disney World. Get a two-for-one special. Exactly. Get them to come back up to us a couple of times. So this is how South Carolina ended up playing Central Florida at Central Florida. Now, a month ago, maybe not a huge game on a lot of people's radar. And all of a sudden, South Carolina defense looks a little shaky, and UCF beats Penn State at Penn State. What kind of team are they looking at, David? What, what kind of team is South Carolina looking at when they go to Orlando? Well, I'll tell you what, Josh, that Penn State win changed everything. Before it was like, oh, UCF, they may put up some numbers because they're playing Akron and Florida International early, but right. they won't be that good of a team. Then not only do they win at Happy Valley, they put up 34 points mm -hmm. on, the, on the Lions. And, uh, you know, they were well ahead most of the game. Yeah, so. Absolutely. It's a surprising team, Josh, and uh, you know you have a quarterback in Blake Bortles who throws the ball really well, who's put up some big numbers. And the way I look at it, you have a couple of other guys that are kind of going unnoticed in running back Storm Johnson. Right. He's already got six touchdowns on the year. He's going to be getting the ball, you know, at the goal line for a lot of uh, plays. And then you have a linebacker in Terrence Plummer, who's uh, you know leading the team in tackles right now, has the two, three tackles for loss, has a forced fumble. He's going to be a guy that's going to try to shut down South Carolina's running game. So it's really kind of a mystery to what USC is going to be facing, especially with UCF also coming off a bye week and right. you don't really have any recent tape to look at. And this is a game that you know they've circled several times on their calendar. A sellout, the first time they've ever played on national television, the chance to beat a ranked team for only the second time in school mm -hmm. history. First time they've been 3-0 since 1988. Mm -hmm. The Knights are going to be loaded for bear, there's no question. For me, the key to this game, because of what you mentioned about Blake Bortles, and they've got some wide receivers who can make plays, is the secondary and the communication. Vic Hampton talked about it. Just the sense I get is that this defense, and particularly the secondary for some reason, is a little fragile mentally. They don't have a lot of swagger. They don't have a lot of confidence. They're talking about trusting each other. They're talking about communicating. They've got to do those things early. If they don't, Bortles hits a few plays, and the guy can hit plays. They have a few miscommunications, a few missed assignments. You get into a bad spot where all of a sudden they don't trust each other again, and that becomes like a snowball. David, what's your key to the game? What are you I, looking at? I think it's uh, right along those lines, Josh, because as you're you're right, they haven't had a lot of that uh, that that swag right. that DJ Swearinger did so right. well in these first three games. But they are getting a big piece of it back now with Cedric Cooper, a uh, linebacker, coming back to play. He's fully healthy now and he's ready to go. As he said, I've been being the best cheerleader I could be, but I'm sick of being a cheerleader. I want to get out there and play. Josh, they love Cedric Cooper. You and I both yeah, know that. Absolutely. Coaches wanted him out there from day one, but he just he dislocated his elbow, and there's just nothing you can do about that. Right. He's back. He's ready to go. And while nobody can say that he'll go in there and immediately make an impact, he's the guy that they wanted on the field from the beginning. They're going to have him. He'll be able to settle a lot of people down because he plays so beyond his years. Right. And uh, he'll be able to make some plays, hopefully, try to get to Blake Bortles, maybe tip a few passes. And definitely, you know, when Bortles is handing off to Storm Johnson, maybe Cedric Cooper could be that guy to stuff him in the middle, which was a huge problem they had against Vanderbilt late in the game. Right, and they need that guy. A lot of Gamecocks, it seems, are getting healthy. Looks like Cody Waldrop's going to come back in the lineup, although Steve Spurrier said he expects to play both centers. It's going to be a weird thing if they do. We'll see. I, I, I quipped this week that, you know, he's stuck with one quarterback now, so he's going to rotate centers just because <laughs> he's got to juggle something to, to make himself happy. be interesting to see how that rotation works. I think Stadnick has been great. They're fine either way, but I know they like Waldrop. They like his size. They like his bulk. Clowney and Sutton, we understand, are a lot closer to, you know, feeling good than they did the last week. That's huge for South Carolina because sure. the more pressure they can get on Bortles, the better off they'll be. UCF also rounding into shape. They've got a left tackle kid who's probably going to be an NFL player who's back in, back in the saddle this week. So that matchup against Clowney ought to be a good one. All in all, 
Looks like everybody's pretty close to full strength. Everybody ought to get their best shot. What do you see happening? Yeah, it's it's only one one thing that uh you know the only thing that's lately come out is uh, UCF lost their middle linebacker right. for another week. He uh, had a little bit of a legal problem, so he's going to be suspended. But uh you know everybody seems to be healthy on both sides. And the way I look at it, Josh, for a score prediction. I know UCF hadn't played the best of opponents, but they're averaging 38 points a game for a reason. Against a defense that's kind of struggled with all the hype of this game, I think that UCF's going to come out and put some points on the board early. I think that they're going to score 24 points against this USC team. But I think the way USC's offense has been going against some really good competition, they're going to easily score 35, if not more. 35-24 Gamecocks. I think that you're right about the offense. I think that South Carolina may have entered the season with the, the, the notion that, like the last three years, we're going to ride this defense and we're going to do what we need to do on offense to win games. Well, the mindset's changed a little bit. You may not yeah. be able to put as much as you did on the defense. The offense might have to do more, and it's looked through three weeks like maybe it can do more, particularly a guy like Mike Davis. You mentioned the Knights middle linebacker is out. That's good news for Mike Davis. I agree with you that South Carolina wins this game. I agree with you that they do it with their offense, controlling the game. Not sure it gets quite to that point total, but I'll look at 30 to 20 because I do think that South Carolina wins this game with offense. Is the better team. This could be a scary game, but I think both of us clearly think that the Gamecocks come out of here three and one. We'll all be in Orlando Saturday to bring you all the action, so check back all day. We'll let you know how it goes.